Well, hello everyone. Hello from Texas. Thank you for joining us today. It's morning in Texas, you may not know. So it's good morning from us, but I know it's evening. It may be evening where you are, or it may be some other time altogether. So um, good evening, good afternoon, whatever the case may be for you. And Anna, if you don't mind while I'm talking, if you don't mind helping me get people admitted if they pop up on your screen, thank you so much. Um, as most of you know, my name is Lisa Hollinger. I'm the Assistant Director of Marketing and Outreach for the College of Information, which is the college that you all have been admitted to for your different programs. Um, the first thing I wanna find out is what programs are you coming from? So let me go ahead and launch a poll for you to answer. And we'll find out what programs you are part of. Here comes the poll. And go ahead and just choose your major so we know who's here with us today. I need one more person to answer. If you haven't answered, please answer in the next 20 seconds and I'll stop the poll and we'll see where you're where you're all coming from. Okay, let's share the results. So as you can see, we have um, most of the students here today are in the data science program. So congratulations on being admitted to a very competitive program. Um, then we have uh, information science. Here, I would love to know if you wanna put in the chat information science major, what your concept is. Um, and then uh, we have health informatics. So also, and health informatics are also competitive programs. So. Uh, congratulations to you for being um, for being admitted to those programs. And then we have MA Linguistics. And of course, I think you all know by now that I graduated from the Masters of Linguistics program. So I'm excited to see a fellow linguist here. Um, so if you want to put your specialization in the chat so we can see also the linguistics student, you know, which concentration are you thinking of going for? The information science student, which concentration are you thinking of going for? You can put it in the chat and we can see. All right, and then we I have one more poll for us today because today's topic is related to jobs. Everything jobs, you know, there's part-time jobs that you do for some cash in your pocket. And then there are internships that you might do while you're in your program, which is called curricular practical training if you're a an international student. And then there's perhaps a OPT that you wanna do after you finish your program, which would be your optional practical training that you could do after you graduate. Um, so let's go ahead and see what experience do you have so far in your life in the work, in the realm of work. So here is the poll. Here it comes. So there are three questions here. I'd like you to answer, have you ever had a job? Yes or no? You know, some people never have, and that's okay. You've been focusing on school, maybe. Have you ever had an internship? And then also, have you ever worked a part-time job? And we'll see what results we get. I think one thing that Anna will talk to you about once she's introduced herself and talked about her services are, is that a lot of the skills that you may have gotten in previous jobs, or even part-time jobs, could be transferable to a new job and should be included on your resume. And then there are other things that in the United States we don't include on resumes that you may think you should include on your resume. So um, we've got one more person to answer, it looks like. And we have one person just coming in now. So perhaps that person wants to answer. So answer the three questions for us and then we'll share the results. And to the person who just joined, if you wanna answer the poll questions about your work experience. We'll go 20 more seconds and then I'll end the poll. Sometimes Anna, they don't have a good connection. And even though they're in the room, they're not able to participate in the poll. I hope everyone could participate who wanted to. Okay, let me end the poll and show the results. So as you can see, uh, it looks like many of you have had jobs before. 
So, and then um, have you ever had an internship? It looks like several of you have had internships. And then it looks like just a few of you have worked part-time jobs before. So um, that's something to think about. You know, what did you learn in those jobs? And what did you get from those jobs? Of course, the culture, work culture could be different where you worked before compared to now. Um, so let me stop that. And what I'd like to do now is introduce Anna Motes. Anna Motes is our career coach for the College of Information, and she's going to tell you more about herself. So go ahead and take it over, Anna, and share your screen and your presentation. Okay, hello, everybody. Just give me one second. Whenever I share my Zoom goes into another thing for some reason. Yes, just, it happens. You know, it's always behind what I'm trying to share too. So I'm like, I can't say. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. And I don't know about you, but I'm at home today. So I'm only on one screen. Whereas usually I have access to two screens, which is much better. All right. I do have two screens today. I am at home, but I do have two screens today, mm -hmm. um, thankfully. So hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Anna Motes. I am the career coach for the College of Information. Um, so I'm just going to talk a bit about what the Career Center does and what I can help with. Um, and then I'll probably also mention what the Career Center does not do uh, and what I cannot help with, uh, just because I know a lot of us are um, international students. So, um, well, I don't know why I said us, but a lot of you guys are international students. Um, and so it, it can be different, you know, with different um, countries, they have different systems. So, um, but just starting out, um, so you guys have not been to campus yet, I know, but um, oh, did I accidentally skip one? Let me see. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. Uh, but uh, I'm going to talk about some of the buildings and, and things like that. So you guys will see that when you get to campus. But um, so here is uh, the way that campus is set up. We have um, a main campus area. Uh, and then that is where the main career center is located. And then where the college is located is called a building or is a building called Discovery Park. And um, out there, there's two colleges. So there's College of Information and College of Engineering. This is the career team for those two colleges. So we have uh, myself, I am the only one for our college. And then we have three of my colleagues for College of Engineering. So when you guys do get to campus and you are uh, wandering around the building, if you see any of these lovely faces, these are career people that can help you, basically. Um, let me keep an eye on the chat. Oh, there we go. Uh, da, da, da. And then, um, like I just mentioned, we do have our main office that's on Sage Hall on main campus. And then uh, my office, when you guys get to campus, is in the Learning Technologies Department um, in Discovery Park. But uh, how our how our um, career center is set up, we have call or career coaches embedded in all of the colleges. So every college has their own career team. Um, and so if you have friends that are in different colleges, they also have their own career coach and they will be embedded in the offices for their college. Uh, but I am in the learning technologies area, so I'm probably the only one you need to remember out of this one. Um, so then what does the career center do and how can we help you? Um, so basically, the Career Center is a lot what it sounds like. We're here to help you with your career. Um, it is a little different from uh, different country systems, but I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, basically, we have three kind of main areas, essentially. We have our career education team. So that's me. So that's the career coaches. Um, so the career coaches, our job is to meet with students generally one-on-one -on -one or in workshops or group appointments. So things like these, like presentations and things like that. And in those meetings or presentations or workshops, um, my job is to just help with uh, finding either, you know, jobs, internships, um, or looking at career exploration, really anything related to um, the process of finding a position, essentially. Um, so things like what kinds of jobs can I get? 
I need to write a resume or I have an interview coming up or I need to write a cover letter. Those kinds of things are what I help with, basically. Um, then we also have our student employment team. Uh, that is another arm of the Career Center, basically. So our student employment team helps those students that want on-campus jobs. Uh, because on-campus jobs, um, so I know a lot of, uh, you know, F1 students, uh, you can't do an internship for uh, basically a year um, when you get here. And so on-campus jobs are the only thing that you, that international students have at first. So I know a lot of international students want on-campus jobs. So our student employment team is here to help with that. Um, and so since there are so many applicants, I get a lot of students that are like, I've applied to so many and I haven't heard back and it must be my resume. It's probably not the resume <laughs> that's the problem. It's, it's just that uh, there are hundreds of other applicants for each position. I've seen one that had over 2,000 recently, 2,000 applicants for one position. And it is usually one person's job in that department to sift through all those applicants. So it's just there's just too many applicants with that. Um, so our student employment team, they have the background knowledge of like the handshake system and how that kind of works more than I do. So I tend to recommend students go to the student employment team for on-campus jobs in particular. Um, but I'm happy to look over the resume if the student wants me to. Basically, that's what I can do. Um, and then also the other area that we have is our employer services team. So this is our internship team and our employer services team. They're kind of together. But basically their um, job is to bring employers to campus, essentially. So we have um, events and career fairs that um, our employer services team brings employers here for that. Um, I do want to do a quick caveat with that one. Um, so it is... Career fairs in general are a little different from what you might see in other countries. Um, the companies that are coming, they are recruiting um, and they are hiring, but it's not a quick process. It is uh, rare for someone to come to a career fair, they get hired on the spot. It is a little bit longer. It's more meeting the employer and starting that networking process maybe applying right then or connecting with them on LinkedIn, but it might not be immediate, um, you know, for you to hear back from them. So it is a little bit of a longer process there. So I don't want students to, you know, come to the career fair and think I'm going to get a job today because uh, it doesn't really work that way in the U.S. in that system. Um, but yeah, and then we do also just have um, a lot of resources available to students online as well. So that's under the career readiness area of this uh, little brochure here. Oh, brochure, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> basically things like that we offer students like free business cards or free professional photos. Um, but also we have like our mentorship program that's university-wide in addition to the mentorship program that the college runs. Um, so things like that. Um, are basically what the Career Center can offer. Um, so what the Career Center cannot offer, basically what I cannot help with. Uh, I like to talk about that um, when I know that I have a lot of people coming from other countries because it is a little bit of a culture shock, right? It's different. Um, so essentially the Career Center system in the U.S., it's not a placement service. Um, so I don't have, you know, a list of employers that I can send someone's resume to. That's not really how we operate here. Um, or um, I'm also, I'm not really involved in any kind of immigration stuff. So things like the curricular practical training um, that Lisa mentioned or um, optional practical training, the OPT as well, um, those kinds of things. I am not involved in, so I get a lot of students asking me because it is career related, but it's more um, immigration and legalities. That is a completely different office on uh, UNT's campus. So that's the International Student and Scholar Services Office. Um, so I can help with the process of finding a position, but then once you've found one and you need to deal with all of that, uh, you know, employment authorization and things like that, that is a separate office. Um, yeah. See, I don't think I missed anything, but any kind of questions on that? 
I don't see any in the chat. But... No, nope, nobody has put a question in the chat yet. If you have a question for Anna, go ahead and drop it in the chat and we'll ask her. Um, she did mention the International Students and Scholar um, uh, Office which I'm sure, I hope all of you have been connected to them because you're supposed to be doing your wings orientation through the international office because you, if you're an international student. And uh, if, you're not, if you're here and you're not an international student, please disregard this information, but I believe most of you are. If you're not, you can let us know in the chat so that we can cover both bases. But um, what Anna is talking about is that, you know, anything related to your visa, uh, your F1 status, or if you have a different status, I believe we do have a couple students who have a different status. They're the experts and they're going to know what you need to do to get everything approved. So Anna, if you don't mind, would you drop the, um, the web page for that in the chat or also the, the email, I think it's international advising at unt.edu. And if you're finished and we don't have any questions, it looks like maybe we don't have any questions for Anna. Oh, just as I spoke, a, a question came up. So thank you so much, uh, Prakhar, for sending us a question. Uh, the question is, how do we look for internships for our respective fields? So and by I do actually have other slides that I can look at that, but go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Anna. No, I thought fine, you were finished. No, <laughs> and then, it's just a good place to stop and ask for questions. That's all. <laughs> okay. And then he also asks, and by what time should we start applying for them? So how do we look for internships and by what time should we start applying? I'll hand it back over to you. Yeah, sure. Sorry. They, uh, they changed the international um, page. So I'm trying to find it. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll work on that while you take yeah. over. Okay. I think they updated their website. <laughs> Yeah, we're migrating to Omni. And uh, because we're migrating to Omni, a lot of links are getting broken during the process that have to be checked by humans and reconnected. So so please bear with us if you find a missing page and you can alert whatever office it is. So I'll try to find their correct page right now, Anna. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, so I do have some other, you know, some other things that I talk about. Um, so this one is um, events that we try to have um, for students out at Discovery Park. Um, we do the first one every week, but the second one we try for every week, but it depends on the employers. Um, so in addition to our big career center events, um, we also have smaller things that we do. So um, every Tuesday, the career coaches will sit out at Discovery Park um, and we will treat that time as drop-in hours, basically. So if you have questions, but you know, you're looking at my appointment system and um, and there's nothing there like you're like well i have a quick question but she's not available for a little bit because uh, my schedule does fill up very quickly um you are welcome to come to drop in hours so that i can just answer that quick question um, and then that way you don't have to wait um, and then we also have uh we invite companies out to table companies that are recruiting to table at discovery park so that they can meet students, start to get that networking going. So it's essentially like a career fair, but only one employer at a time. So it's a little bit less overwhelming, basically. Um, so yeah, so those are some of the weekly events that we have, or at least that we try to do weekly. And then um, the system for applying to internships, where I usually recommend starting, so this is the internship question, um, is Handshake. So um, Handshake is where we keep um, pretty much any, or not pretty much, sorry, uh, any employer that requests to recruit UNT students. Really anyone that wants to get in front of UNT students and they want to meet UNT students, they have to be in this system in Handshake. Um, so when, when students ask me like, oh, are there any companies that partner with UNT? Yes, there are, and you can find them here. Um, since we are such a big institution, we don't have just like, you know, a, a book of employers that I can hand you. It's all in Handshake. Um, so they post their full-time jobs and their part-time jobs or their internships there. We also host all of our on-campus positions there and then also our events as well. So any kind of career fairs, any events with the career coaches, any kind of that uh, or any of that kind of thing is in Handshake. Um, so very important system, basically. Um, and, and I, I do have a question, okay. Anna. I'm yeah. sorry, before you continue. So, you're, you're good, yeah. so is Handshake the only place they should look for internships or not can the they also place. look? Okay, yeah, so they're- not the only place. I do recommend starting there. 
Yeah, because that's where we have companies who actually have reached out to us and said, we're interested in UNT students, right? So, Uh yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, So there are other job sites, but I also like to have students start on Handshake because of um, the filters that they have. So they do have filters, particularly for international students. So they have where you can just be like, okay, I only want to see the ones that are open to doing um, you know, the the legal stuff for my employment authorization that I need to do. Um, so you can select that filter so it takes that guesswork off of it if you are an international student and you do need that for your employer. Um, so that's why I like starting with it and then, um, you know, exploring other options. Um, so other, you know, other job sites are going to be things like, um, you know, Indeed, LinkedIn, all of those. Um, and then, um, there are some, so depending on your major, so like health informatics, um, I know of several different professional organizations for that one because they're a little harder to find on the main job boards, but the professional orgs are kind of more zoomed in. So, you know, things like that are good places to look. Um, if you ever meet with me, I can send you a list, basically. I've got a whole document of them. Um but yeah, so that's where I would start would be Handshake when you're looking for internships. I think the question was, when should we start applying yes, as well? Yes. Um, I would give yourself a good six months um, when you're applying for any kind of position. So if that's like a full-time job or an internship, start looking early uh, because it takes time um, to get these. It's the average is six months, basically. And, so. and one thing that I've noticed is that a lot of times they start recruiting and accepting applications and resumes in the fall, like yes. October, November, December yeah. for summer, for summer internships. Mm-hmm. So if you're, if you know, if you're targeting a summer internship, you know, a year after you get here, you kind of already have to start looking that fall yeah. and applying, and then you have a chance to do it again, you know, the next cycle. And of course there are also spring and fall internships available, but a lot of them like to do it in the summer. So yeah. Yeah, that is kind of the traditional time, I guess. But um, but yes, Lisa is absolutely right. Um, a lot of the companies, when they do have summer internships, they start looking or they start opening those applications around September. Um, and then sometimes they're even closing in October. So make sure to start early. Give yourself enough time um, to be able to find something. Um, and then there are definitely, so like, say you accidentally miss, you know, in October that, and you don't start looking until November for a summer internship, that does not mean that all of them are gone. Absolutely not. There I even see them posting. Yeah. I even see like them May. posting in March and uh-huh. April and May. Yeah. So yeah. don't ever, don't never stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but just start early, kind of keeping your eye open for them. Um, but if you do happen to miss it and start looking late, it's okay. The, it's, you still have options. Um, yeah, you can still find something generally. Uh, but it is a tough process. So that's why I am here is to help you, you know, look at your resume and things like that. Yes. Um, um, and Anna, we do have another question okay. in the chat. Okay. And it's also related to, this is related to on-campus jobs, which okay. since you're on this slide sure. and Handshake is also the place to go to find on-campus jobs. As a matter of fact, it's the only place to go, isn't it? For um, on-campus jobs? Kind of. <laughs> kind of, okay. I can okay. talk about it. I can talk <laughs> about right. it. All right. Um, but anyway, her question is, this is from our uh, linguistic student. Okay. And her question is, and I, I can speak a little bit to this too. What kind of on-campus jobs are available and are they related to our programs or a little different? And it's, it's yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> yeah, <basically. laughs> But you want to speak uh, a little bit, Anna, and then I'll maybe add something. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so on-campus jobs, a uh, huge variety with on-campus jobs. Um, basically, The biggest employer is dining services. So that's going to be, you know, the dining halls and uh, food service places around campus. They need a lot of people in order to staff their areas. So that is the biggest employer for on-campus jobs. Um, But pretty much any department will likely have a student worker at one point. So like how we have career ambassadors, they, their job is to be there for students for drop-in hours and do a lot of the things like an initial resume review and things like that, or they go out and do programming. So our office uses student workers um, or on-campus jobs. Um, Pretty much any office has them. 
Um, so it can be very, very different depending on what you're looking at, basically. So it could be just like a front desk worker or it could involve more um, like looking at data or it could be, um, you know, marketing, finding, could be yeah, marketing. marketing stuff like mm -hmm. that. Like, Social uh, media. Yeah, exactly. Or like uh, doing things like events and, and being there to set up for events and, and tours. Fostering, yeah, exactly. Tours, that kind of thing, too. So pretty much anything you can think of, there probably mm -hmm. is an on-campus job for it. Yes. Um, yes. And can I speak directly to to the linguistics student? Because sure. I also know that, you know, we have an intensive English language institute on main campus, and I work very closely with them to help them find students, student workers for their programs. Now, they usually will have you start coming as a volunteer. So I just want to warn you that often they have to get to know you first. And then when a position opens up, you might get offered a student worker job. So um, it's a good idea if, you know, in your case, Nirali, that you are um, interested in linguistics and teaching English as a second language, possibly for the future. Um, it's a good place to get experience, maybe not making money yet, but then maybe the next semester they'll have a, a position open that you can apply for. That's how I did it. I basically went over there and I said, I want to work here. What can I do? And they said, well, first, can you help out in the lab uh, in the with the students? And so I did. And then the next semester they said, oh, now we need a lab teacher. We'll hire you. And so that worked out really well for me. And then in addition, you know, that's one side of the linguistics um, program or the linguistics idea. Also a linguistics student is a communications expert, right? So if you see any jobs in like communication officer or communication, we need you to help with uh, uh, writing stories for the website or anything related to really using language, those jobs would be considered related to your program. Um, but you know, dining services, no. But you have to think, what's my goal? Is my goal to get money in my pocket? Because dining services would be a great way to quickly and easily have a job that will get money in your pocket because they do are they are the largest employer. Maybe not quickly and easily, but they're going to be your best bet. But then later you can keep applying for, you know, the different kind of jobs you might be interested in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there are also the one, the kind of job that I didn't mention that is for on campus uh, or that is on campus employment would be things like teaching assistants or research assistants. Um, so there are also those available. Um, however, those are generally not found in Handshake. Um, so that's why I said kind of uh, when it was, is this the only place for these? Um, so that really depends on the department. Um, so how they hire and how they have people apply for those really is different for each department. Um, but the reason those are not on Handshake is typically because um, when students are, you know, desperate for an on-campus job, or not desperate, but you know what I mean. When they really, really want an on-campus job, um, they're tending to apply to every single one they find. It does not matter if it's on campus, I'm gonna apply for it. Um, so that tends to just kind of get a lot of applicants, basically. Like I mentioned, I've seen ones with, I've seen one with 2,000, over 2,000 applicants. Um, so those areas that are really, really major specific, where they really want someone who has these skills within this particular major, they tend to kind of do that through their department and not really post those on Handshake. So Handshake and then your department's website is going to be the two places that I would go. Um, like I know the information science department, they have a little form that you fill out and then that puts your information into a database for the professors to look at. Linguistics does too. Linguistics okay, has an awesome. online form. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's so under financial does. aid. Like it's okay. like, are, do you, are you looking for a TA position to help cover your, you know, so it's, yeah. it's not under jobs, it's under financial aid, but you do have to start there by applying there. Yes. Um, and then same for the information science department, it's under financial aid and scholarships, I think is the technical tab title. Um, but yes, so each department is a little different in how they handle that. Um, but yeah, so Handshake and your department's website are going to be the places to go for those. And then another thing to, to do is watch my emails because sometimes professors reach out to me and they say, hey, Lisa, I have two positions open. It's not usually TA positions. It's usually lab positions or sometimes RA positions because to be honest, uh, master's students don't often get TA positions. They usually get RA positions. Usually PhD students are doing the teaching. That's not 100% true. Sometimes uh, master's students will also help out um, in the classroom. 
but grading and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, so if you, if they, if they email me and they ask me to share it, I'm going to send it out to your, to your people, the people in your department, all of you. And um, so you should be watching your Eagle mail because I send it by uh, bulk mail, which comes to your Eagle mail. All of you should be checking your UNT mail from now to eternity, right, <laughs> Anna? Yes. <laughs> now you can forward, you can do something with the system to forward your, your UNT mail to your personal mail, but UNT will not email your personal mail once you are here. So really starting soon, they won't be emailing your personal email anymore. I'm going to keep doing it because I have the lists of your, you know, your Gmails and such, but uh, start watching your UNT mail constantly, especially if you're interested in possible positions um, with professors on campus. Definitely. And then also just networking with your professors is a good way to um, find research and, and teaching assistant, or sorry, teaching or grading research assistant that kind of thing uh networking with your professors as well is a really good way to just let them know that you're looking um so that if they hear about something they can let you know as well so yeah definitely um, and the uh, one more point about that is that don't um don't send the same resume to every opening you know, your, your resume should match your, you should put your skills on it that match the job that you're going for. So if you're just using the same resume for every uh, opening you apply for, very often they'll take a quick look at the top couple things you wrote and they have so many applications to look at. If it doesn't have some of the, the job description skills that they're looking for on it, they're not going to even look further. Is that true, Anna? Um, that's more true for the, for internships and full-time jobs. I feel like, um, on campus, it's a little tough to do that just with how Handshake is set up. Mm -hmm. You can only have like one, it's like you have to make this document public and then you have to, and, and then it attaches to you. So it's a little, it's a little, oh, that's good uh, to know. yeah, a little labor intensive on Handshake, but I definitely do recommend tailoring your resume for each position that you apply to. Um, on campus jobs, it's just a little bit tougher. Maybe the cover to do letter. That. Do they have yeah, to do a the cover, cover letter? letter? Yes. Um, so for on campus jobs, I believe they have to do a student employment application, resume, and then a cover letter, I believe. Um, so yeah, if you can, it is really nice to spend that time to tailor your resume for an on campus job as well. Um, but, you know, I have some students where they're like, it's just too much work to do that. And so, I okay, um, with those ones, it is a little less important um, just because uh, they're mainly looking at like a few different things. And you also have that student employment application as well. So they're they're actually probably starting with the student employment application. So maybe the best that. advice for the on campus jobs is at least have a resume, not a CV. Yes, definitely. Because a CV would be more focused on your research and your education. And, a, you know, an on-campus job is looking like, what skills do you bring? What can mm -hmm. you do here? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, I, I'm sorry to keep interrupting, but you no, keep making awesome. me think of other questions. Okay. We yeah. don't have any other questions in the chat. So go ahead. Okay. Let me see. And then, uh, so this slide just has our uh, career fairs that are coming up for the fall. Um, so the ones that I always point out for our information students are going to be um, the STEM Career Fair, so that's on October 2nd, uh, out at Discovery Park. Um, and then depending on your area, um, so like for data science, say, I know we had a few data science people in here, um, like the Risk Management and Insurance Fair or the, um, the Business Fair um, or the Banking and Finance Professional Networking Series, like those ones are relevant to your area. Um, or things like linguistics or library science, uh, the education career fair might be more related to your area. So these are, uh, we do have our all majors fair um, in November, but we also try to have smaller ones <clears throat> that are a little bit more zoomed in into particular areas as well. So definitely keep an eye on these. Um, <clears throat> with these, I have the uh, the QR code for it'll take you to Handshake, so it might not work for you right now since you might not have a Handshake account yet. But once you get a Handshake account, <coughs> sorry, once you get a Handshake account, you can look at all of these individually and see the employers that are coming ahead of time. And then they actually they actually have filters too, so you can be like, oh, you can look at is this person hiring my major? Um, are they CPT OPT friendly? Like, are they F1 student friendly? 
Um, so you can look at that information ahead of time so that you kind of have a plan when you get there, basically. It's like, yeah, I know who I want to talk to. I've researched them. I got it. Um, yeah, so it I think, is, Anna, that's so important because yeah. I see, it, you know, it can be really crowded yeah. at these career fairs. So you don't want to waste time standing in front of a table to get up to the hiring manager just to see that that, that they're not some they're not useful for you yeah, for your particular exactly. major. Exactly. And we do have a question related to this. It okay. says, can I attend career fairs of different departments, although I'm not related to those majors? This is from Yosha. <clears throat> um, yes, you should be able to. We don't we don't gatekeep. The, <laughs> the the career fairs anyone who wants to come uh more than welcome to come um but i but would you register right sure you have to register you don't have to register oh. you can um so uh you do need to check in when you get there that's a little different from registering but um registering beforehand just gives you reminders about that mm -hmm. event um and kind of gives us an idea of how many students might be coming so we do like it when you register but it's not and, required. And, and then they can also go look at the companies that will mm -hmm. be there right like what you were just saying exactly. about checking the companies and checking are they opt and cpt friendly mm -hmm. and checking uh uh who, what kind of jobs are they looking for like what kind of titles do they want mm -hmm. and, and then i would also say that the um Think about what is the title of the career event, you know, right? And which ones are most important maybe to our College of Information students? Um, yeah, College of Information is really interesting because we have different areas. We have like some that are education and then some that are tech. So generally, I'd say the STEM career fair and then the kind of educational sides like the education fair or the human resources area. Um, but then the tech side is probably more like STEM uh business banking and finance risk management and insurance those kinds of things are probably going to be more related um certain ones of these are really zoned into their areas so like a professional networking series for mental health and social services that really is geared towards people that want to be counselors or people that want to work in public health or social work so it's probably not worth your time going to that one if you're not interested in those areas we could have someone here though that is i mean yeah, i've, I've been surprised yeah. to find data science students who want to work in the mental health care field so it could absolutely. be absolutely yeah know? yeah so, it's so like, definitely if that's interesting for you and if you if mm -hmm. you do want to go into that field absolutely go ahead no one's going to be like what department are you with yeah uh, no. when you get there um but yeah so that's kind of uh for the students to look at and decide if it's worth their time basically. okay and and yes just also wants to know if Okay. If, if he should attend the career fair in, in formal attire. Oh, okay. Um, I would say probably business casual would be what I would go with. Um, so Can you describe what business that casual? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm gonna, I'll give you. <laughs> um, is I would do um, just looking like you're making an effort, basically. I've seen people in workout shorts and a, a sports bra, literally. I saw someone wearing that. Don't wear something like that. But <laughs> um, what you probably should wear to a career fair um, would be like a button up shirt or, you know, a blouse um, or um, slacks, probably, um, or like nice jeans, maybe if you don't have any slacks, nice jeans and a button up at least looks like you're trying. And this is a right? button up, you know, it's got a uh -huh. collar and it buttons yes. down or it can be short sleeve too if it's summertime because mm -hmm. it is really hot here in the summer. So yeah. Um, and, and so a polo or a button down kind of Oxford style shirt and then yeah. slacks or nice jeans, you're saying? Yeah. Nice jeans. Maybe if you don't have time to get slacks, nice jeans are probably okay. Um, I would avoid things like sweatpants, pajama pants, t-shirt, um, things like and that. And wear comfortable shoes because you yeah. will be walking around it's, a lot. It's walking. Uh-huh. Um, so something you can walk in, um, yeah, so really the, the employer just likes to see that you're making an effort, basically. Um, I've had some students be like, I didn't know about this. Can I still go in? And they're in, you know, something that's kind of more casual instead of business casual. Um, and I, I will never turn someone away, basically. The business fair might, they, they might. They, they yeah, they're a little tougher, the business. And that's in the College of Business yeah. building, right? The business leadership building. Uh, so. That one's actually in the union. Uh, oh, it's in the so, union. Okay. Yeah. So all the other ones are in the union besides the um, 
the STEM career fair, except for some of our smaller events, like the financial planning day and stuff like that. Those ones mm -hmm. are in different locations. But and then maybe for a, for a female, how should a female dress? You know, obviously, I, I mean, I'm wearing a button down, but yeah. And I'm wearing a polo right now. But so women, like, that's fine. you know, a blouse, <laughs> a blouse is also okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and some slacks or a skirt mm -hmm. but you don't yeah. have to you don't have to wear you know like a three-piece suit or anything. yes or like a you know a, a like a pantsuit with like a tie no you really don't have to wear something like that uh just kind of a step above maybe normal clothes but not mm -hmm. quite to formal I would mm -hmm. say um, I I noticed that our international students tend to dress nicer they do and more formally than our domestic students so probably even what you would wear to class on on most occasions would be okay it, it, unless you're a really casual dresser <laughs> but um you know a, a shirt and pants or a skirt but don't go buy something yeah yeah you don't need to although if you do we do have an event with jc penny um where um students get a discount um if they come at a certain time uh, or within a certain time range um, well so and you will an need that for, for that and you and you will need that for the real job interviews, you know, Definitely. when you're going to a company yeah. to interview. Okay, mm -hmm. we do have another question. Okay. Um, do we get help in finding off-campus internships? Let's say companies that don't fairs and are not available on Handshake, like some people to contact or how to approach the employer. And I think you've kind of touched on this, but if you can just remind and yeah. add a little. Yeah. Um, so uh, we do not have a list of people to contact for those that are not in Handshake. Um, Handshake is our list of people to contact. Um, so it's different from um, kind of career offices in uh, maybe other country setups um, where we don't do placement services. Um, so we don't have a list of contacts for you um, other than Handshake. So we're a big, we're a big campus. We have 47,000 students. Um, Handshake is how we organize all of that. So Handshake is our system where the, the students can see the employers and then also the employers can see the students. So they can look through, they filter and they see, you know, uh, they look at different majors and they look at those kinds of things and then they can contact people. Um, so it goes both ways. You can see them, they can see you. That's how we do that. Um, that and I way... know students who were contacted by an employer yeah. through Handshake. Oh yeah. And they did, <laughs> yeah, they did, they didn't, uh, yeah, yeah, with, for, for your I past did. job. Okay. Yeah, they didn't have, a, they weren't reaching out to the employer or right. even applying for anything, but the employer said, hey, I see you're graduating and you're getting a data science major and I'm looking for that kind of person. Can you apply? And they ended up getting the job. Mm -hmm. That was with Lock Lockheed Martin and okay. also Deloitte does okay. that. Yeah, yeah. So companies will reach out to students on Handshake. That's kind of how we work with that. Um, so that way it avoids because uh, we can't we can't do any favoritism, basically, just because you contact the career office does not mean that you should have, you know, any kind of advantage other than the knowledge that I pass on um, <laughs> of just like, hey, here's in general how to do some things that, you know, might some strategies and stuff like that. But um, and do you offer strategies on how to approach the employer? So, for example, I maybe can. maybe Prakar finds a, a LinkedIn internship and wants to know like what can I do how do I get this LinkedIn internship thing going yeah I can um so I can I definitely talk about strategies on how to approach employers and how to apply online and things like that nothing is ever foolproof unfortunately I am not magic I can't guarantee that you find something but I can offer some strategies and some advice on how to do that definitely um it's just that we don't have a contact list for students, basically. And, and just so all of you who are here in the meeting know, almost every time I interview a student who has gotten an internship and I'm interviewing them about their internship or who has graduated and gotten a good job and I'm interviewing them about their job, almost every single time they mention the help they got from Anna Motes and how <laughs> useful it was. So just know that that's, you know, this is one contact you absolutely want to keep and all the information she's giving you. And what's the best way to find out about the activities going on the, in the Career Center? Just check the Handshake, the, the website. Okay, mm -hmm. check Handshake. So handshake. The, the, the events will be posted in Handshake. So yes. you all should be making a Handshake account right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we like having one website where everything is, is hosted. So yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah, uh -huh. because otherwise <laughs> they're having so many different places they have to look. Right, I know. Yeah, so our big career fairs are on there, but also our smaller events as well. So our workshops that we put on like um, 
for example. Um, every semester before the STEM career fair, uh, myself and my engineering uh, career coach colleagues, we put on at least two resume review workshops and we put on a uh, career fair networking workshop with the library. Um, we're actually partnering with them um, on that. We've done that for a year and we've done the resume workshops and it, it works really well. Um, so events like that, it's more than just career fairs on Handshake. It's also workshops like that where there's going to be some really useful information um, if you can make it, basically. Um, and for that, if you do register for a smaller event, try to make it. <laughs> we have that problem where we're like, oh, my gosh, we have like 40 people registered. We need to like get a, build a bigger room. Like we need to make sure we have room. And then day of like five people show up. Uh, so if you register for something, please, please, please make the effort to be there. Um, we are a very small operation at Discovery Park, so we notice when students don't come to things that they signed up for. So Right. And they can cancel their registration, right? Yes, so if, if they have registered and then like you find out, you know, oh, my professor wants to meet with me that day or, oh, I have a big test the next day. I can't make it. Go yeah. ahead and just go in and cancel your registration so that the Career Center knows how many people are coming and they're not running around trying to find extra resources yeah. to, to use. Um, I did just put the Career Center um, link in the chat. And Anna, is there? we're getting close to the top of the hour. We have mm -hmm. about 15 minutes. I thought we could do the web quest now unless there's something else you yeah. wanted. Oh, yeah, you do need to talk about this, making an appointment. This is, this is the only <laughs> one, yeah. Uh, so this is the system to make an appointment with me. So uh, it's called Navigate. This is how students make appointments with uh, places like Academic Advising, the Career Center, um, I think like Student Money, Ma Student Money Management Center is on there too. Um, so different offices, you make an appointment through Navigate. Um, just to give everyone fair warning, um, my schedule uh, fills up very quickly in the semester. Right now, super open. I think I have one next summer. Week. Um, but <laughs> so um, you all should use her in the summer. You know, really, it, in the summer, if you're around, if you're not going home to your home country, you should be making appointments with Anna in the summer. Yeah. So like during summer and and just breaks between semester, I I generally am a little bit less busy. But during the semester, do not be surprised if it's like October and you're looking and you're like, I should look at making an appointment, and I don't have any available for a month. Um, that unfortunately happens. Um, so with that, try to start thinking about it early, basically. Um, so if it's like August and you're like, oh, I know I'm going to start looking for, you know, an internship uh, this semester, maybe start looking at my calendar then, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so just fair warning, I do fill up pretty quickly during the middle of the semester, but um, I am, you know, uh, here to help. It's just that we have a lot of students for me to help. So can uh, Anna, can they can they go ahead and make an, a virtual appointment with you sometime over the next couple months before they get to campus to, if they want to go over their resume or something? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. As, yeah. Soon, as soon as you have Navigate access, you can make an appointment with me. And basically. all of these students are admitted, well. so mm -hmm. they they should have yeah. access by now. So. And I, I do in person or Zoom. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Let me yeah, so sure once you get here, of course, you can go meet her in person. But before you get here, you can um, meet her on Zoom. So just feel free to make an appointment if you need to. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So we're good. Nice we're going to thank you so much, Anna. Let's give Anna a round of applause. Thank you so much for your presentation. Anna's going to be very helpful to you um, once you're here for all, anything career related and or even before you get here. And then I have a little web quest that I've created for the Career Center website. So I want all of you to navigate to the Career Center website. I put the link in the chat and then I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to ask you to find some information on there. Um, do you see the first page of the Career Center here now, Anna? Yes. Yes. Oh, oh I mean, my PowerPoint, my PowerPoint. Yes. Yeah, I was like, oh, wait, wait. Okay. Yes. No, yes. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go, what we're going to do is I'm going to put a question up here, and then I want you all to find the information and answer it. And I'm going to save the chat at the end of this meeting, and I will let you all know by email or, and also on the website um, who the winners are. You get points for every first correct answer you, you get. So just do your best, okay? So here is your first question. Who is the assistant vice president of 
Hold on, I have too many things in my way. Student Affairs and Career Success. So go ahead and find that on the Career Center webpage. First person to put it in the chat gets the points. This is also uh, a, a really good, oh, you have a you have a message in the chat, Anna, to you. Um, this is also a really good way to learn how websites are set up in the United States and especially at UNT. I should say it's really UNT culture. Our websites are set up in a specific way where we put, yeah, you got it. You got it, Prakar. It's Eileen Becker. Is it Beaker. Becker, Anna? Beaker. Beaker. Okay, Eileen Beaker. And she, I am not kidding you guys. That woman works hard on your behalf. Don't you think, Anna? Oh yeah. She she is always thinking of new things to do for our students. And she listens to us when we say we need more activities for international students or we need more activities for graduates or distance learners, whatever it is, she listens. Okay. Good job, Prakar. You got the first points. Okay. Next, who is the internship specialist for the College of Information? This may be a little more difficult to find, but I think you can find it. They can. Should be. Yes. Yes, it's there. It's good to force you to look around on the website. <laughs> and you got a thank you in the chat from Victoria. Thank you, Victoria, for coming yeah. to our meeting. Um, I think it's so important for the students to start knowing all the things they need to know before they get here. You know, once you're here, you're going to be busy with finding a, a well, probably you've already found, I hope you're all looking for places to live, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but getting moved into your place and meeting people and going to class and getting your books and getting acculturated to the, to the culture. Don't be afraid if you have a little culture shock after you get here, that is normal. Um, and there are so many resources available to you. Okay, I wonder who's going to find the internship specialist for the College of Information. I know who it is. Do you know who it is, Anna? I should. I'm looking on the uh, the website, but it's actually not on there. Yeah, it wait, is. Never mind. There it is. Okay, never mind. It is. Okay. It is. It's there. It's not in alphabetical <laughs> order. I was it, like, it's not minute. obvious. It's not <laughs> obvious. Yeah. And well, there's another the place. That I knew. <laughs> there's another place to find it as well. There's a couple of different places to find it, actually. Okay. This happens a lot on UNT web pages is that, you know, information can be found in multiple pages of one site. Mm -hmm. So you always just need to really look around and navigate. I think I'm going to give this 20 more seconds. And if no one gets it, I'm moving on to the next question. Do I get the point? <laughs> okay. Well, if you tell us the answer, Anna, you have to put it in the chat. <laughs> okay. Can you guys beat Anna or not? I think maybe you can. Basically your internship specialist is out there shaking the trees for internships for College of Information and working with the employers mm -hmm. who may be interested in hiring our students. And then I believe, what's the student facing part of that, Anna? Is there a student facing uh, part? They are actually not student facing anymore. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. So, but they would let Anna know mm -hmm. um, if, okay, she put the the page for where you can find, find it. it there. Yeah, they would let Anna know if they had, you know, they would contact Anna and say, oh, you know, these are the internships that we've just been able to rustle up if you want to let students know that match your students' majors. And then Anna would post them on our website, on the Career Center website and Handshake, I suppose. It should already be in Handshake, yeah. But okay. I would post them to our LinkedIn. That's uh, right. The, the employer is the one who posts on Handshake, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. All right. So, and oh, and also we have the COI LinkedIn community page. We have a mm -hmm. LinkedIn page that's called College Community. You join there because Anna and I do find things to post there that are not always on Handshake. I, I hate to say this, but you know, some of our alumni reach out and say, oh, I have an opening in my library, but they, they're they not the ones posting the job. The library would have to do it and they can't get the person in line. So they, we just share it. Thank you for putting the link in there, Anna. So that's the link you can join at. Okay, no Thank one got, come. oh, Jasmine got Dixon, you got it, Nirali? Okay, great. So Nirali gets the points for that one. It is Jasmine Dixon. Okay, let's go to the next question. How many hours can international students work on campus? 
Oh, <laughs> Nirali was fast. She probably <laughs> saw that when she was searching around. It is 20 hours, 20 hours during the week, during the school schedule, during the semester schedule. And then I believe that when classes are not in session, they can work more. So that's so. something that it depends on your department, depends on where you're hired. I know the dining services likes to use them more when possible. Yes. Okay. The uh, International Student Scholar Services Office is the office to ask those yes. questions. Yes. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for that reminder. Don't ever listen to even your friends about, yeah. about advice, about what you can and can't do uh, on your F-1 visa. Always go to the International Students and Services Scholars, I know scholar services. The I S S S. It's the I Triple S office, and they are your best friends if you're on an F one visa or really any kind of visa. I know we have a couple people here who have. Uh, we have a student from Ukraine who I believe is on a different kind of visa. Is it so, one maybe? Maybe even not. Maybe oh, um, another one. Oh. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm not sure. Uh, we would have to ask him to share if he wants to share. So use the drop-down link for graduate students. There's a drop-down link. You, if you pull it down for students, you can find graduate students and name one service that is offered that you might like to use. This is a good page for you to be familiar with because it's focusing on you as graduate students instead of undergraduate students. You know, we have undergraduate students too. Uh, we have about what, 15,000 graduate and maybe the rest are undergraduate for 47,000 total students, something like that. Mm -hmm. All right, who's gonna get the points? Right now, Nirali has two correct answers and Prakar, I believe was the other one, has one correct answer. So that's points that they'll get, but you can get points too. We have first, second and third place. We've got about four minutes left. I do have a hard, kind of a hard stop at nine, nine oh five, maybe nine ten today because I have to take my mother to a doctor's office appointment, to a doctor's appointment. So go to the main career center website, find for students this, and then drop it down, click it, and you'll find graduate students, and go to that page. Some of these services are ones that Anna mentioned already. Uh, resume. Yeah, Prakar got resume. And I see that, um, so Nirali, you shared a link, I guess, um, but we needed the yes for resume, but Prakar yeah. beat you. <laughs> Just by a second. Okay. Resume help. Right. And that's what Anna was talking about before. Okay. Here's the next question. What documents do you need to bring to the I-9 verification after you get an on-campus job? So these terminologies, even to me, are like, what? I-9 verification? It's just verifying that you have the right to work in this position. So as an international student, you have a couple documents you need to bring to that meeting when you get your I-9 verified, which means you can start working in the department or in your on-campus job or even for an internship or a, a OPT, they have to do this process, right? Yes, uh, basically it is um, a process for the federal government that you are who you say you are and that you mm -hmm. have authorization to work in the U.S. And, and domestic students have to do it too. I have to do it. We all have to yeah, do it. Yeah, we this. all have to do it. Everyone has at, to do it. At, when we get a job, the federal government checks us. Uh, are you who you are and do you qualify? Not skills, but can you work? Yeah. And the I-9 is just what the form is called. Yeah. Okay. We got passport visa from Janavi. That looks good to me. You also, I, I just read on the um, website this morning. I hope it's correct that as a student, you could bring your student ID for your photo. You know, if you don't have a Texas ID or you don't have a, um, um, a driver's license yet, which by the way, all of you, if you're planning to drive, you have to get a driver's license. Don't drive without a driver's license. I've heard that students are doing that sometimes, Anna. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you'll get in big, big trouble, oh, and that's no. against your F-1 visa status. So, so, yes, you need to bring your passport. That can prove who you are. And also, you can bring your, uh, your, your visa proves that you have the right. Okay. All right. Good job, Janavi. Let's go to the next one. 
when is the business career fair? Anna mentioned this in her PowerPoint, but if you don't remember, you can find it on the calendar. Business career fair. When is it? And should they go, Anna? Okay. Ah, yes, yes, yes. We've got some new winners. We've got Hi. some new people getting points. Yes, it's September 11th. Oh, and 12th. I just put September yeah, 11th on my it's paper. It's two days. Yeah. It's two days. Okay. Should, do you up. think it, it would it be smart for them to attend the business career fair? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You should you should register. And then this is one of the career fairs. You can't show up in sweatpants for sure. Yeah need to wear slacks and a shirt. Uh, the This is hosted by the College of Business. But, you know, every business needs data scientists. Every uh, uh, healthcare companies are businesses. They need health informatics people. Mm -hmm. um, every business needs a communications officer mm -hmm. or a person who takes care of their marketing, which is a linguistic, can be a linguistics major. Mm -hmm. And every business needs an information manager. So information science or information systems. Mm -hmm. So all of our majors fit very nicely into the business school or training as well. and development for learning technologies. Oh my goodness. I didn't even remember that. Thank you so much. Training and development for learning technologies. So if you're a learning technologies major, which I think we do have at least one here, um, that the business career fair would open up HR openings, right? So I highly recommend you go. All right, let's go to the next one. Where will the STEM career fair be held? And Anna did mention this in her slides. But if you forgot, you can find it on the calendar. Yes, good job, Janavi Discovery Park. Oh, she sent that directly to me. So be sure to write, Janavi, be sure to send it to everyone because then they think maybe I'm cheating. No, <laughs> <laughs> Janavi actually sent me a direct message first saying Discovery Park. And then Yeshas told us when. So Yeshas told us it's going to be in October 2nd. Thank you. We needed to know that. But Janavi told us Discovery Park. And by the way, that's where we are. Our College of Information is neighbors with the College of Engineering. And we are in Discovery Park. The dean's office is in Discovery Park. Anna is downstairs in the Learning Technologies Department space. Not because she's only for Learning Technologies majors. She's for all College of Information students. But because that's where there was a free office. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm upstairs in the dean's office. So, okay. No problem, Janavi. <laughs> Yeah, just make sure you send it to everyone. But I can confirm that Janavi was the winner of where will the STEM career fair be held? And also she was the winner of the last the last question. Anyway, mm -hmm. don't worry. I'm going to save the chat and I will uh, let everyone know. Okay, here comes another question. When is the virtual career fair? Oh, and by the way, all of you should attend the STEM career fair. Definitely. STEM. Your majors are all STEM. November, November what? November 20th, yeah. So Victoria got November, I'll give her half credit and Yashas got November 20th. I think they can both have some credit for that. And Yashas, you direct messaged me. So let me just uh, make sure that you send it to everyone in the meeting because I can see your answer, Yashas, but the others cannot. So it is November 20th, that's okay, <laughs> November 20th. So the virtual career fair, what do you think, Anna? Should they attend that? Uh, so that one is one that um, we don't have a ton of students, uh, like not as many as the in-person, but the employers really want students to come to that. So uh, the employer services team has actually specifically said we want, the companies want College of Information students there ah. particularly. Mm -hmm. yes. And so, so they're like, what, what can we do to get your students to come? So, um, so that's going to be great because that will help you get in front of employers without so many other students there. Yes. Yes. And those are set up a little differently where you, uh, cause like in person, right. You get to walk in and you're just kind of walking around and talking to people as you come up. Right. Um, the virtual is set up differently because we can't really do that in a virtual environment. So you do need to sign up for slots to speak to an employer. So it's just you in that slot. Um, awesome. And so, you're not like pushing and exactly, trying to get, <laughs> get out of my people, way. Right? <laughs> trying yeah. To see. yeah, no. So Absolutely. definitely you all should attend the virtual career fair. These are employers who may not be local mm -hmm. to Texas, you know, to to Denton. They may even be just down in Plano. 
but they don't want to drive up to the Denton campus. So, so you should absolutely attend this virtual career fair. Okay, thank you, Anna. I'm so glad you said that. And that's yeah. good information for me to have too. Okay, here's the last question. Last question. Name one mean green mentor you might like to contact. So I really want you to choose someone, not the first name you see, but someone who actually could be useful to you in your major. Or maybe it's the first person you see. I don't know. Oh, we got Corey Gorman. Yes, just wants to meet Corey Gorman. Who is Corey Gorman? Oh, near Raleigh wrote Lisa Hollinger. <laughs> I think I am a, still a mean green mentor, although I don't think my photo's on the page, but um, yeah, it was, I signed up to be a mean green mentor, but you can, you can get me through the college of information, Nirali, get someone else who you can't get. <laughs> um, okay. All right. So I'm going to save the chat and I'll be sending out the details of who has won, but I think I will stop sharing my screen. Thank you all so much for participating in this meeting. And I see that we're getting thanks from some of the students that are here. Um, I'm so glad you found it useful. Please come to our next week's meeting, which is July 2nd with a faculty panel. They'll be here to answer all your questions about how to be successful in classes. And it'll give you a chance to meet maybe a professor that you'll have in the future. And then we have some other ones coming up. So keep Keep watching for my emails and keep joining us. We love having you here. Thank you so much, Anna. Let's give Anna a round of applause uh, and a thanks for her efforts. We so appreciate you. I know it's at eight o'clock, eight o'clock on a Monday morning, but okay. And I say goodbye to everyone. Have a great weekend, everyone.